Hey, what's up, guys? Durant Productions here. The second Mac Revel laptop here, the Mac Revel Code 01, which is almost just the 15.6 version of the Mac Revel S2 Air. The most important difference for the 15 inch version on paper is the 90 watt hour big battery. Now just use a knife to open the seal and take the internals out. Inside the large box, there is still a small box, which is kind of Mac Drawer standard, I suppose. They just want to make sure the internal box during shipping will be safe. And if one customer returns to them, they just put another box and can reseal. Out of the box, we get a pretty large laptop with the similar manuals and chargers at the S2 Air. The laptop is wrapped in a black sleeve, while it's definitely not for daily usage. You have got a stupid lit seek manual, which is not really useful here. The charger, 90 watt, 90 watt charger, yeah. The laptop looks almost the same as the 14 inch version. You feel it's quite light on hand. It's just 1.4, 1.5 kilograms, almost the weight of a nowadays 14 inch version laptop. The back plastic fan panel feels a bit soft. Um, it's not really unacceptable, but there is definitely quite some way for this type of basic manufacture to improve. The front panel is indeed metallic, well, but the metallic build feels quite cheap, just quite cheap. It got quite some ports on this laptop, one Kingston lock, one LAN port, two USB type A port, one headphone jack, and even a micro SD port. On the other side, there is a USB Type-C port. It can be used for charging into the laptop, but you definitely need a 90 watt charger plus a Type-A port, HDMI port, and a charging port. Considering its weight and size, well, quite many ports, it's definitely a bonus. You have a pretty wide uh, window for cool fan to go inside and a pretty wide plastic stand at the back side. It's a pretty simple design. Everything basic is over there, but if you are looking for anything that is premium or well-crafted, sorry, there's no. You can hardly use one single hand to open the laptop, and when opening the laptop, you can feel the softness of the screen. Well, it's deformed. So if you're looking at the overall long-term quality, I would like to say it's just below average. You have a 15.6 inch matte display. It looks pretty good. The bezels are narrow. The keyboards look silver and uh, it's not just black as the 14 inch version. The look is better. The alphabets are even mechanical style. Well, it's still not using chocolate keyboard and this type of keyboard is difficult to type and easier to break according to our years of experience. The trackpad looks almost the, the same as the 14 inch version and although it's clicky, but it feels quite soft. Also, it definitely has some room for improvement to use a larger trackpad because there's quite some room out there on this laptop. Although it is metallic on the keyboard side, while it's not cool and it feels like a type of plastic metal when you are using this device. After some preliminary setup, let us now power it on. It's the same 
very bad power button as the 14 inch Mac, uh, the Mac Revel laptop. Not really know when you own it, when you cannot. It's not responsive. But after on it, things are good to go. It's pretty fast. In just a few seconds, you enter the screen. The screen looks pretty gorgeous. It's quite contrasty and quite bright. Take note that currently I'm shooting just indoor in a sh shiny day. In many situations, you will find many screens looks just quite dim if you put the screen against any outdoor sims. Everything but is quite soft on this screen. The bottom, the top, you just press slightly and you can shake for one second. So um, the craftsmanship is pretty bad. If you compare this to Lenovo or HP or Dell, well, even though they're using the same metal or same plastic, those Taiwan brands, even they use pure plastic, it will be much steadier than Metal Chases here on Mac Revel. Well, skip about the build quality, the speed is super fast. It's definitely Taiwan, a top-notch responsive rate on this. It has the best processor and pretty good OS optimization. Definitely, we can see that Mac Revel has done something to optimize the OS so that the responsive rate is fast. Now, let us open London Tube Singer to look at the display quality and sound. not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy. Our next guest, all she was trying to do was catch a train in the London tube, and now she's one of the hottest videos on internet. Here's why. Finish the lyrics. Shall we talk to girl? Are you happy in this model world? Wow. You guys keep saying this so hard. Wow, you really could keep going. The screen quality is pretty premium. It looks much better than the 14 inch version. There's one um, drawback of this screen is that the brightest, the brightness is not that high. It's approximately only two, 250 nits and definitely you will require a 300 nits or, or even 400 nits screen to um, use it comfortably and to get a highly contrast image. The sound quality is quite mainstream for basic entry-level laptops from this type of unknown brands. It's totally not comparable to just $500, $700 laptop US dollars from Lenovo HP. There's nothing to complain about, but well, if you want to have any premium feel, it's definitely not the case here. Now, let us open IDA64 to look at some specs. The central processing unit on paper is an R7, 4800H with 16GB of RAM, user replaceable on the motherboard. You cannot see any SPD information here. But according to online information, you can replace both RAM sticks yourself. The battery is really impressive. You got 90 watt hour battery, and considering the charge rate, which is very low, just 4 watt, 5 watt here, you can, well, even get 20 hours idle use time, and definitely confident 10 hours 
just light work time, no any issue, or even moderate work time. This is super impressive. And you can never expect so good a battery performance from such a bottom tier laptop manufacturer. The first time, see a 20R plus indicator on the Windows logo. For those who just need a laptop to type codes outside in Starbucks, this is probably one of the best machines out there. The GPU is a 448 shaders version. It's lower than 48000U, but it's definitely good enough for everyday gaming, for those um, not using PUBG, for those just uh, playing Dota 2 or whatsoever. The display is from BOE China, 15.6 version. This panel got a 300 nit plus brightness, but here we feel it's quite dim. Probably our unit got some um, larger variance or deviations. The contrast ratio is pretty good, 1000 versus 1, and 100% sRGB color garment. So on the paper, it is a very good screen, and if the brightness can be better, it will be gorgeous. The solid state drive is from Fission China. It's a good solid state drive, but there's, um, it's definitely not tire one maker, but it's a pretty nice tire two maker from China. The Wi-Fi car is also a bonus here. It's a Wi-Fi 6 AX200 from Intel, and definitely you will get more stable Wi-Fi connectivity than real tech. Luckily, I can squeeze all the screenshots or all the results of the benchmarks inside one screen. The performance are just good. The CPU model core, you get 1.5K on Sandy Bench R15 and 183 for single core. The solid state drive, you got 1.5K megabytes, 1.5K gigabytes per second, and it's definitely good enough for daily use or more than adequate. The RAM speed and cache speed are also high with low latency for the Blackmagic raw speed test. Although the GPU is not optimized, as we all know, the CPU is approaching an MS50, which is very powerful. So using this laptop, you will not find any issue from the CPU side. Should you need a more powerful GPU? Well, you can just go and look for those gaming laptops with a GTX 1650 or even higher specs. Running into the stability test first on the CPU, in idle mode, the temperature is below 40 Celsius degree with a 1 plus watt, very power efficient CPU. After started, After stability test, the frequency now stabilizes at 3.1 GHz with a 30 watt power envelope. The strategy is 100% the same as the 14 inch version. But even after we open the high performance mode in system settings, things did not change. After 10 minutes of stability test, the frequency is exactly the same with the same power envelope. The temperature is also very low. So we can say that the stability of the performance output is just rocky stable. Now let us stress test the GPU. After starting, the frequency is clocked to the highest 1.6 gigahertz with the power consumption around 25 watts. The GPU is more power hungry than the 4800U version GPU or 4600U version GPU, which only consumes about 16, 17 watt on its full frequency. Now just adding the CPU all together and the CPU frequency goes up quite quickly 
to approximately 2.7 GHz in the GPU now at 800 MHz. This is a pretty good distribution considering there are 8 cores running at 2.7 GHz. The total power envelope is also separate, also 30 watt, and there's no need to run anymore because this, this laptop is very confident in 30 watt heat dissipation.